I was born 1935 in the famous wine region of the Rheingau. My father was born and raised in Europe, in Germany in fact, on a vineyard on the Rhine River, right around the middle of the Rhine where it makes its swing from the east to the west. Several cities along the Rhine River it was for many, many years known for its beautiful Rieslings. But one little town called Asmanshausen was known for growing Pinot Noir. My father managed an estate there from 1923 to 1959. There was a group of vintners who took a tour of Europe and amongst other wineries they also visited the winery my father managed. And uh, said, by the way, if your son is interested to come over and see what we're doing here, then have him get in touch with me. I explained my plans to my wife-to-be and her family, who was also in the wine business, and they all said, do whatever you like to. If you really enjoy it, go ahead and do it. I used the opportunity to come over at that time, still by boat, aboard ship. We had our new Volkswagen, 13 pieces of baggage, and two pairs of skis. <laughs> In 1961, we arrived in Delano, moving to Napa Valley, 66, and uh, starting with Joseph Phelps Winery in the beginning 70s. He developed some of the most incredible wines of their time, at a time when nobody was doing these things. Insignia, the first Bordeaux blend in America, the first late harvest Riesling in America, first Syrah in America. He was arguably the most famous winemaker in the Napa Valley in those days. Why would he want to leave all that behind and go off and make Pinot Noir? Pinot Noir well, was a tough wine to make. It was even tougher wine to sell at the time. So when Pinot Noir was discontinued in 1980, the question of whether my father would want to make his own wine wasn't really um, something that was discussed. It was just that he wanted to keep making Pinot Noir. Mr. Phelps's agreement and uh, permission to start the Schuch label to sell the accumulated Pinot Noir now required my attention. It was worthwhile to spend money to build our own winery. We knew that money would be well spent. The site was ideal because it was easily accessible, but then it was also subject to the breezes that were coming from Bodega Bay, bringing in cool air from the ocean. I always praised the this, this southern tip of Napa Valley, the Caneros wine region. I knew the quality that I could produce, and that's why we said, Let's take it. I saw an opportunity to come down here, work in Carneros, work with Walter, make some memorable Chardonnays with him, but then also learn a lot about Pinot Noir. One of the great things about this plot of land that's the Shuga Estate, we've got some very shallow soils. Uh, they're not very fertile, so the vines struggle a bit. That's also complemented by the foggy mornings and then the windy afternoons. As the valley cools down, we suck the fog back in. The wind comes in and it, it tends to shut the vines down, so that, that extends our growing season. Produces more intense flavors, makes for smaller berries. Wines that have great flavor development, but we don't have to deal with a huge amount of alcohol, which is really gets to the core of Walter's philosophy, and to make sure that the, the quality that we've grown gets into the bottle. Pinot Noir is supposed to be light and lively. It's a very seductive wine. It's not a big, it's not a big hammer. It has always been my goal not to destroy the character of the fruit. Our job is not to necessarily make and, and change things, but really to kind of guide and course correct where needed. My father was importing winemaking equipment from Germany some very fine fermentation tanks, state-of-the-art temperature controllers. We brought in a new destemmer sorter, and all of that uh, uh, comes from Germany. It's a combination of the soil, the climate, 
the winery, the winemaker, the culture that is around it. I always say that we are expressing our terroir through our background, through our history, through our German roots, and that influences the style of our wine. Watching it to become wine in the winery. When you walk through one of these underground caves and you have several hundred barrels fermenting, literally talking to each other as wine is being born, it's just wonderful and a reward of what you've worked at all the year long. We have a carved oak oval here in the cellar and it says on the top of that carved oak oval that whatever is in it should represent the source it was made from and I, I live by that. My father's legacy in this business definitely continues on. We would, of course, hope it stays with family. It's already been three generations. He gave us the direction that made us successful, not making wine for scores, but making wine that we believe in. Not just building a physical winery and planting a, a vineyard, demonstrating a work ethic that when you start something, you persevere, you don't give up. The future of the winery has that soul in it. Part of my father's legacy is bringing over trainees from Europe, much as he came over here in the uh, late 50s. Every year we have a wonderful team of young students. I enjoy uh, having this younger generation working with us in such that they have so much interest in it that they even take the effort of coming from one country to another. I feel that our brand and our activities are being respected and appreciated. We're approaching the 100th anniversary of the Shug family's involvement in making a Pinot Noir, both in Europe and California. Shug is a, is a dedication to craft. Tradition, classic, and family. Pinot Noir. Soul, vision, integrity, Shug wine is the result of that. I think the, the people that work here are very uh, dedicated and loyal to not only each other, but to the wines we make and getting back to Walter's vision. People want to achieve that. Mm -hmm.